Guys, we're in season five of the Open Door Experience now. Season five now, yep. And you can see all five seasons at odx.tv. If you guys haven't seen them, I encourage you guys to go there. If you're like, man, we never saw your television show. Well, go to odx.tv. It's free. Go there and check it out and watch it. There's five seasons of television shows on there. I want to welcome everybody that's joining us from all over the planet Earth and call you guys blessed in Jesus' name. And tonight, I'm going to talk to you and to everybody that is here about artificial intelligence and authentic wisdom, and they're two different things. So I'm going to take you through a little bit, and then I'm going to have a special guest that's going to join me here tonight. Guys, if you would, please open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. And while you're opening your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to talk a little bit about the flood. Like, why are we talking about the flood? That don't have nothing to do with AI. It actually does. And like, why does the flood have anything to do with AI? And it's because of this. Jesus says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And we are now discovering that there are so many different layers to that. So many different layers to that. And one of the layers of that, one of the things that was going on in the days of Noah that brought a worldwide flood and there's a Hebrew word for just mass destruction from God. It is called harem. Anybody remember the old Elvis movie, Harem Scarum? Yeah, harem. Like, you know, he's got a harem. Well, there's another form of harem, and harem also means um, genocide. Like, why would God Almighty order genocide? And it's such a provoking word today. The woke culture speaks it over anything that they disagree with, right? And here's what I would tell you is this, because in the days of Noah, you and I can realize now that there was a hybrid DNA thing that was going on, beginning at Genesis chapter 3, told plainly in Genesis chapter 6, and then after the flood, it happened again in Genesis chapter 10, where the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and there were giants in those days. So what we have learned is that there was a transhuman thing going on in the days of Noah, and God said, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this because the DNA that I'm dealing with now is not the DNA that I created. It, it is the creation of another creator, and that's what the devil wanted to do in Genesis chapter 3, and that's where the promise of the seed war began. Is everybody still in here? Amen. Amen. So you guys got to be tracking with me. Like, well, I ain't never heard this in church before. Well, maybe you've been in the wrong church. Hallelujah. Because this is the word of God, Genesis chapter 3, the first of 400 messianic promises that Jesus Christ would show up. The very first promise is that he will show up to combat the seed of the serpent. Two different seeds. God, while God Almighty has all kinds of patience for his creation, he has, no he has no patience for what is not his creation. And so going up all the way into the days of King Jesus, the plan was to contaminate the DNA in such a way, in such a way that even the Messiah could not be born. But praise God for Genesis chapter 7, Genesis chapter 6, because it says, but Noah was perfect in his generations, and he feared the Lord. And God Almighty said, okay, I'm going to do something new through Noah's uncontaminated bloodline, and we're going to do a clean slate, and we're going to start all over again. So is everybody still here with me? So as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. There's so many different layers. I need to do a whole sermon on that. How are these the days of Noah, and how does that have anything to do with the return of King Jesus? One of those things is just such theological masterpieces is this, the ark is exactly like King Jesus, and there's only one door to it. There's only one way into King Jesus. Jesus is the door. Amen. Are you guys with me? Jesus is the door, and there's only one door. And if you're going to miss the great tribulation, if you're going to miss the coming apocalypse that is not designed for you, if you are going to actually miss all that, I want to tell you this. The only boat afloat is Jesus. Amen. The only boat afloat is Jesus. So put your hope in King Jesus. Now, in Genesis 
chapter six. I know that y'all are in three, but if you're like, hey, you tell me to go three. Let me tell you, go to six. you don't got to go to six. Let me just show you this. Because the coup de gras, the thing that caused God Almighty to finally pull the trigger on this transsexual, trans agenda, transgression that is happening in the word of God in the days of Noah, the catalyst of it, we can actually find. What is the thing that caused God to say, okay, here comes the first raindrop, right? What was it? And it says it in verse five, then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great upon the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, the whole trans thing had been happening for generations. But the day that God saw their minds are evil continually, he says, it's time for us to make a change. I got nothing else to work with. I don't have a single thought pattern within these human beings as a species that I can deal with. There's no way that I can enter in truth. There's no way I can enter in hope. There's no way that I can do, because their thoughts are evil continually. Are you guys still here? Because this is about a way we think. This is about what we think, how we think it, and how we perceive even our own thought life. And guys, it's being attacked today, and it will soon be taken over for those who do not have the mind of Christ. Now, in Genesis chapter three, as I was telling you about the seed war, God knows, the devil says, God knows that if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, remember this, the one way, the transgression, the only way that you could transgress against God was this. You're not allowed to have knowledge outside of God. Like, well, but some of it was good. Anything without God, even if it's good, is evil. So there was ancient ways of thinking that was made manifest within a tree, all kinds of knowledge of good and evil that God says, I don't want you thinking within this realm. You, you can't think within this realm. I don't want you perceiving things like this. Like, well, okay, this thing is really a good thing because we can fix that thing with this thing. And God says, yeah, but it ain't me. It's not the plan I have, and that's not the way that I do things. That is the way that the world does things, and you're not to serve the world, you are to serve me, so don't think like that. So what was, it was the knowledge of what? Of good and evil. So it says that there was a tree, and the devil told him, he said, look, um, you know, so, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. There was a wisdom that came with this tree that whenever she saw that, she took of its fruit and she ate. And then she also gave it to her husband with her and he ate. There's so much in this and I wanna, I would love to just spend the rest of the evening just unpacking those verses because they're fascinating to me. And one is like, okay, well, the woman surely led in this. The woman surely led in this because she was the only one that was engaged with any form of situational awareness. The brother was out. And husbands, I want to tell you something. If you do not have situational awareness that is supernatural for your house and for your family, your wife and your kids will end up speaking to snakes. Amen. Talk to your wives. Talk to your kids. Be involved with what's going on. Be involved with what they're struggling with. Hallelujah. Man, y'all are a quiet bunch. Where's Rochelle tonight? Where is she? Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. So, so Jesus was also tempted by the same thing, all right? He's tempted by the same things that Eve was during his 40 days in the wilderness, the lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh, the pride of life. But the bottom line is this, what separated from them from God is the same reason why God destroyed the earth, and it was this, their mind is wicked and there's nothing I can deal with. So don't miss that. Don't miss it. And see, today, this is what the world will tell you. It's not wicked if it's full of knowledge. 
It's not wicked if it's got good things in it. It's not wicked if it can assist and help you in some way. This thing amplified them and it was still wicked. This thing had good attached to it and it was still wicked. And once they did that, once they started, once their mind was turned over to something that was not God, now they had to be redeemed because they were forever lost. In Genesis, Chapter 9, Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 7, when God Almighty brings the flood, he brings it because their thoughts are wicked continually. He had been watching all this sin of the flesh go on, but he didn't pull the trigger until he saw he couldn't work with their minds anymore. You need to know, guys, that's why the devil is after your kids in school. That's why you can't do a Google search without it coming up with some kind of woke junk that is anti-God, anti-freedom, and hates your family and hates your guts. That's why it's all this, because it's not just about controlling the narrative. They want to control the narrative until you bow the knee of your mind to it and say, well, then this is the way that it works. That is knowledge of good and evil. And the tree that it brings requires the tree for Jesus to hang upon. It all began with a tree in a garden, and it ended with a tree on Golgotha. So choose you this day whom you will serve, Jesus One of my favorite verses about wisdom, and there's so much, man, to talk about wisdom. There's so much. Wisdom is such a big deal. But one of my favorite things is Jesus said this. Jesus says, wisdom is justified by her works. And it's like, whoa, nobody's ever said that before. That's weird. Nobody's ever heard that. What the heck are you talking about? It's like, dude, you're stupid. Well, that means stupid is as stupid does. Before Forrest Gump ever said that, Jesus said, wisdom is justified by her works. Are you guys with me? Forrest Gump was a prophet. Y'all didn't know it. So it's like, well, what does that mean? It means stupid is as stupid does. And it also means this, godly thinking is as godly does. So there's no way if you are not thinking like God wants you to think that you're going to do the works of God. Wisdom is justified by her works. So as a man thinketh, so is he. So your thought life and your thinking and your decision-making paradigms should be formed by the word of God, and if they are not formed by the word of God, then they are formed by something that is not God, and even though you're thinking things that are good and amplify you, you, God's getting ready to pull the trigger because there's nothing else you can walk in but judgment. And the devil knows this, but Christians don't know this. James chapter three, verse 15, I'm sorry, yeah, verse 15 through 17 says, This wisdom, talking about ungodly wisdom, does not come from above. So there is a wisdom that does not come from God, a way of thinking that does not come from God, a worldview that does not come from God, a lens and a paradigm of decision-making that does not not come from God, but it's earthly, it's sensual, and it's demonic. Everybody say earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking is this, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable and then gentle and willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Why is that? Because there's a process of redemption that comes with God's wisdom. If you're going to walk in the wisdom of God or if you see someone, you say, dude, that girl is wise. That dude is wise. You're watching somebody who is walking through a process of redemption. And since there is a process of redemption involved here, let me tell you what's going to have to happen. It's going to have to be pure. It's going to have to be peaceful. It's going to have to be gentle. It's going to have to be willing to yield. It's going to be full of mercy. It's going to be full of good fruits. It's without partiality. It's without hypocrisy. Like, what is that all? Those are all relational attributes. And the Bible calls those things the attributes of wisdom. So wisdom comes from relationship with God. But know this, there is a wisdom that does not come from God that comes from relationship with something else. You can hang around somebody 
and hang around and be a part of society. You can be a part of a culture. You can be a part of a hive mind. You can be a part of all those things and there even be wisdom in it and there even be goodness in it, but God is not in it and it makes you the enemy of God. Wow. Wow. So there is a cultural mindset, there is a hive mind, there is a global mindset, and there is a wisdom of the age that's found over in 2 Corinthians. So I'm saying all that to say this. The wisdom of this age is all about, there, there are certain wisdoms of ages, like we could talk about the Industrial Revolution. That was the wisdom of the age, and I want to tell you the entire Industrial Revolution it was actually based upon the production of chemicals to be able to make steel and be able to do those things. It was actually a, there's actually a chemical trail that goes with it. So once the world, once it was unleashed, even the ancient technologies of chemicals, are y'all here? Then what happened is everybody got to work. So with the knowledge came the work. Understand this principle. Now that I've said this, when you see how demonic and how destructive and how sensual the wisdom machines are of our day, whether it's the news, whether it's the internet, whether it's the public school system, or whether it is AI, which we're about to talk about. You need to know that, that with that wisdom comes a work. There is an agenda that goes with that. And there's something that they're planning on doing. It's not just that they would like you to feel the way that, that they feel, or they want to make you aware in the name of diversity of what they're aware of. There is a work that goes with wisdom. Wisdom is justified by her works. I hope it's okay if I preach in here tonight. I hope it's okay if I get up here and tell the truth here tonight. This brother ain't scared. Amen. And so if you see the wisdom, you need to know there is an agenda to do its work. You tracking. So grab a hold of that. Do not lose that tonight. Because we're about to talk about some other fascinating things that you're going to see in the headlines of your life. But you need to know if you see the wisdom, there is an agenda for a work to go with it. That's how wisdom operates. Now, everywhere in the headlines today is artificial intelligence. And again, it's not authentic wisdom. It is artificial intelligence. And it's programmed by the most demonic among us to tell us how to think so that they can do their work. And like, I, I'm a, I don't think it really goes all that deep, Pastor Troy. Well, then you roll over and go back to sleep. And the rest of us are going to fight this battle. And you will either thank us or you will get knocked out of the way one of these days. Because this is real. Now, whenever I first started looking into uh, artificial intelligence, I was fascinated with it. I am still fascinated with it. And I actually, I have chat GPS. Like, well, that's the devil. No, no, no. It's not the devil. It is a playground where the devil will be made manifest if we do not know how to make the kingdom manifest. Okay? It's like anything else. It's like saying money is the devil. No, no, money ain't the devil. But the devil will be AI. We could talk about not only is uh, the beast a really big deal, the Antichrist, but nobody ever talks about the image of the beast that everybody hears and they fall down and worship no matter where they're at on the planet Earth. How does that work? Because it ain't just the beast, it's the image of the beast that everybody is in a relationship with. Well, how in the world are you seeing this beast if you're in Johnson County, Texas, and that's going on over in Rome or wherever it is it's going on? Where is that going to be? How, how in the world is that possible? Because the image of the beast is clearly seen through technology and heard through technology by the entire planet Earth. The image of the beast is a really big deal. So what I was going to do is I was going to go through all these breakthroughs in AI and I was going to actually demonstrate. I was going to do chat GPS for you guys and say, hey, make a Facebook post that is four paragraphs long in the style of Pastor Troy Brewer from Open Door Church. And I want it to be about the Alamo and I want you to find scriptures on sacrifice. And it'll go... 
and it'll start off and say, hey, friends, this is Troy Brewer, and I'd like to tell you all about the place of redemption called the Alamo. It's crazy. It sounds just like me. And I mean, honestly, when I look at it, sometimes I cannot tell if I wrote it or somebody else wrote it. Like, why? How could it work that? Because it goes through every single Troy Brewer file that there is and uses the phrases. Um, do you know how it ended? You know how it ended when I did that today? I call y'all the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. So it went through every video. It went through every single recording. It went through every book that I've wrote in a millisecond. And it formed these things through the commands that I tell it to do. Now, I use AI a lot. Like, why would you use AI? It's the devil. No, it's an accumulation of information. Okay, so I use it as an accumulation of information. So, uh, so a good, for example, is this. Instead of me doing a Google search and saying, hey, I want to write a chapter on the Titanic, I will, I will do a chat GPS and I will say, I need, I need you to write a five-page essay on when the Titanic was made, on how the Titanic was made, on the day that it set sail from, South, from Southampton, uh, uh, England, and everything that was going on in the year 1912. And I also want you to write this thing on how many people were on board, how many survivors were there. And then and I'll say, uh, hit it. And then it'll say, well, the Titanic was created in 1912 and it weighed so many pounds. And instead of me having to look up all that information, it spits it all out for me right there. So it's like having somebody in your room that is a library. Oh, it's really good until it's not. Joining me from South Carolina is an expert on AI. He recently came out with a book that's called Summoning Demons. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a pastor of an amazing church. He's one of the best daddies I know on the face of the planet Earth, and he's got a really cool beard. Guys, this is Pastor Alan DeDio. Pastor, are you with us today, sir? Come on. What's up, Open Door family? Well, it's good to see you, man. Well, it's such a thrill. What, it, technology is amazing. What would the Apostle Paul have done with this kind of technology? I believe we're going to have a powerful conversation tonight. Well, he would have caused a revival or a riot. Yeah. Because that's what he always did. Amen. So, brother, you just got through writing a book, and I saw it. I saw the long line of people wanting to sign your book, by the way, and all the people going, is that truly Alan DeDio? And I was like, yeah, that's him right there. <laughs> and I saw you out there at the NRB. I know, that, I know that you just got home yesterday and all this craziness has been going on. Why did you write this book and what can you tell us about AI? Let's go. I was looking at an interview with Elon Musk where he was asked about artificial intelligence. And he said, with artificial intelligence, he used these words, we are summoning the demon. And then he proceeded to go on and talk about how in a movie, if you're watching a movie and this guy, he'll draw a pentagram on the floor and try to summon a demon thinking he's going to control it. And Elon Musk smiled and said, it's not going to work out. You know, it's not going to work out for him because the demon's going to turn on him. He said, with artificial intelligence, that's exactly what we are doing. And something leapt in my spirit. And the Spirit of God said, you need to warn the people of God, educate the people of God, because my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, this isn't uh, sensual knowledge that we're lacking. It is divine, godly knowledge. And you were talking about this, and this is one of the, one of the predictions I make in the book. When you look at all of the promises that AI says it's going to fulfill in our lives, number one, it'll be predictive. There's a report that came out yesterday that artificial intelligence will be able to predict the exact moment of your death. They're already saying that they Sorry. have models now that can predict with 78% accuracy in the next four years who's going to die so, if it has all the information from so you. So it actually has prophetic pr properties to it. That's exactly right. And, and, and that's a big sell of that. Hey, listen, you need our AI technology into your business and into your stock market and into this and in that because it's so predictive. But actually, it has prophetic properties in it. 
That's what they're saying. It also, they say it'll have healing properties, that it'll cure cancer. One, one AI specialist says artificial intelligence will cure cancer. Regrettably, after that, it'll destroy civilization, but at least, at least it'll cure cancer. And then finally, it breaks down language barriers. You can take artificial intelligence anywhere, and you can talk any language you want to talk, and it'll translate whatever needs to be translated. So here's, here's what really speaks to what you've said so far in this, in this powerful unpacking of the difference between godly knowledge and demonic knowledge. What we're seeing with artificial intelligence is the rise of a faux gifts of the spirit. It is replicating the gifts of the spirit, all nine of them. If you look at all nine, for, what is the first gift that he says he'll give us? The word of knowledge. And notice he doesn't give us all knowledge. He gives us a word, and we're supposed to operate on that word. Uh, the word of wisdom, excuse me, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. AI promises to do all of those things and more because the enemy is preparing the way and setting us up to receive a man who will be endued with all of these abilities through artificial intelligence. And isn't it interesting that the Bible says there's going to come a cat who's going to claim to be the Messiah and many are going to believe him. When Jesus walked on water, he raised the dead. He did all kinds of crazy things. Do you mean to tell me there's going to be someone who walks this earth that people are going to believe that he is a Messiah in line with that? How is he going to do that through artificial intelligence? So last week, whenever uh, I was at uh, the NRB, Alan, one of the things that happened was I was... I was offered a thing that's to help me work with all my social media, right? And these cats got with me and they're like, Pastor Troy, we wanna work with you on your social media team. I'm like, great, because man, we need a ton of help. What is this? And a big part of the thing was, it was amazing because it was one funnel. If you do one thing, it shoots across all of the things. And we already have some things um, that are like that. But this one was way different because it could actually change all of my media all of my videos, and I, want, you know, I have somewhere like around 4,000 videos that we produced in the past just a couple of years. It, could, it would go through every single video we have, and it would do this in a moment. Go through every single video that we have, and if you were watching, say, in China, you could click on Mandarin, and then I would start speaking, instead of speaking Texan, I would start speaking Mandarin, and they illustrated it for me, and my mouth matched the Chinese words. And wow. then they switched over to Italian, and I kind of look a little bit Italian, and that was kind of funny, you know? A vidi vidi vici, right? <laughs> and so I did that. And then they switched me over to Spanish, and then they switched me over to whatever, and my mouth matched it. Okay, we already have that yes. technology, so in an instant, it could pull up, say, you know, Troy Brewer speaking his prophetic word for 2024 in Mandarin Chinese. You can pull that up right now, and if it comes up on the right place, it is me speaking in Mandarin Chinese with a voice that is in the same tone as my voice, but I'm speaking Mandarin Chinese because it went through the algorithms of all my voice, and it actually said Troy Brewer's voice is within this frequency. So they showed me this, and this was part of the technology that they were trying to sell me last week, and I was looking at it going, wow zers. Wow. Yeah, can you imagine the security implications of this, that they can take actually a 30-second recording of any, any of you sitting in the audience right now, a 30-second recording of your voice, and AI can then replicate it. Imagine for a moment the security implications of this where they can get a 30-second recording of you and replicate your voice perfectly, and then your wife gets a call from you saying you need your social security number. So the, 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 the security issues are enormous, and I walk through that in detail in the book Summoning the Demon. But what we're hearkening back to is Genesis chapter 11, where we have the second Antichrist type. Cain was the first type of Antichrist. The second is Nimrod. Nimrod is attempting to establish a one-world order, a one-world religion, a one-world government, and he's able to accomplish this. He's moving rapidly toward his goal because they are of one language and they are of one speech. In order to foil this antichrist system, God comes down and confounds their language. Ever since then, the enemy has been working to tear down those walls so we can bring us once again to a one-world institution, one-world religion, world-world language, one-world economy. Artificial intelligence, as you just so 
uh, clearly laid out, is enabling the Antichrist system to once again grab a hold that that so that a Nimrod-like leader can rise to power. That's, that is so Some right. Say on. We might have a Nimrod in the White House already. <laughs> So, you don't even want, don't fire me up, Alan. Don't. <laughs> you know me, man. So, I got to be good. So, you're right. And there are nefarious things that we can see right now, like it's a big part of the pornography industry right now, is to make pornographic images and even videos out of non-compliant women and even children from the images and from the videos that they get off of Facebook and out of just off the internet. And I know for a fact that that is a very real scenario, a very, very, very real scenario. So I saw a, you might have actually saw this as well, a, a famous podcast, there was three boys and one girl on this famous podcast and the boys found this technology and they thought it would be funny to make pornography using the image of the girl that they did the uh, podcast with and then they showed it to her live on this podcast to see what her reaction was. I want to tell you, she bawled and squalled and said, why would you do this to me? And these stupid boys are like, we don't know what the problem is. It's fake, you know, it ain't you. And she goes, it looks like me. It sounds like me. Why would you do that? And she was so appalled and so shamed over it. And that video actually went viral. I want to tell you what I would have done if I was her brother or, or her daddy, we'd have had to turn off the camera. Amen. We'd have to turn off the camera. That, that is not funny. Okay. Well, where we're headed is this. Where this is headed is exactly where uh, Pastor Allen actually said, there is a one world language, a one world government, a one world religion, a world, one world money with a one world way of thinking. And if you don't think within that realm, you're gonna be spotted immediately. Because this is the way everybody thinks. You're like, well, how is it that everybody would think the same? Well, how did that happen during COVID? Come on. Where the entire world thought exactly the same for about a year and a half. Makes a really good, it seems right to me that we should not go to work, our kids should not go to school. That hundreds of thousands, if not millions of children would not be separated from their abusers, but turn back over to their abusers in the name of safety, just in the United States, that churches would be shut down, that people would not be allowed to um, work for a living, but don't worry about it, you're gonna get a check from Uncle Sam, and this is the way we think now. And everybody complied that quick. Now imagine if all the information that you get and the way that you perceive the world is through the algorithms that have been actually programmed by people who hate you, which is already happening, already happening, and that the whole paradigm of how you decide things comes from something that says this is the truth, like what was illustrated this week, that George Washington was a black man. Did you guys see that? Okay, it's like this, they have, they want to disrupt all history and say, but this is the good version of history. And remember, it's the knowledge of good and evil. And it's not God. They will call a truth a lie and they'll say, yeah, but these are good things and we all agree that this is a good thing for us to say. So this is the way that we will think now. Now imagine if you get a neuro plant and you are directly linked to the internet and you're like, that never happened. Happened two weeks ago. It happened two weeks ago. And now imagine you have a neuro plant, you're hooked up to the internet, and you no longer have to perceive wisdom from the Lord. All you have to do is think what they tell you to think when you ask a question. That's how real this AI thing is. You still there, Pastor Allen? Yeah, if I can jump in here and, and make it even worse than, than what you've just what you've just said. None of and us I want to say miserable this is, enough right now. We we need that. 
This is not this is not a call to run from it. You know, like the church does, the baby with the bathwater, the radio was of the devil, the television's of the devil. These things are tools that we must dominate as long as we can for the gospel. I'm praying in the name of Jesus in open AI, in in Alphabet, in you know, YouTube and Google, that there'll be some Holy Ghost sleeper cells in there who are dropping in revival algorithms and gospel algorithms that are preaching the gospel to the people instead of a lot of the nonsense that we've seen here recently. We need to pray for for those conspicuous conversions. But for people who would be watching this, you know, they're watching it on YouTube or they're watching it on on whatever platform, you say, well, I, you know, I'm not going to have anything to do with AI. I got bad news for you. You're already, there's already a digital avatar. There is a virtual version of yourself that has already been created. The reason why you see videos that you enjoy on your feed versus what someone else sees is because these companies have taken all this information, all this knowledge about you, what you buy, what you watch, how long you watch, when you click on something, how long you watch it, and when you click off of it. They're formulating this virtual version of you so they know how to sell you, so they know how to keep you on their platform. So already on Facebook, if you use Facebook, there's a digital version of you on Facebook that determines what you see in your feed. The same is true for every other social media platform. The same is true for Google when you're going through your searches. Google, by the way, was founded originally to be an artificial intelligence company designed for creating a godlike mind. And we're supposed to believe that they just instead went into the area of search engines. That's not what they did. They are using search engines to build this godlike mind. This has been the plan from the very beginning. So this is why I go into, I, I'm probably the only preacher you know who has an entire chapter in my book called Project Blue Beam. Not Project Blue Book. Project Blue Book deals with UFOs. I've got a chapter titled that as well with all kinds of classified documents I photocopy for you so you can see in the book about what they've been doing. But in Blue Beam, there is an enormous conspiracy theory. And as you know, Pastor Troy, we're running out of conspiracy theories rapidly. They're about to go extinct at the rate they're coming true. Uh, all you have to do is wait a few more weeks and there'll be no more conspiracy theories left. But Project Blue Beam suggested that global elites will use technology like this to simulate a messianic or alien-type invasion or Armageddon-type worldwide cataclysmic event to a compliant populace who will do whatever they're told to do in order to galvanize this one-world government. It's already manipulating the masses. You mentioned this. Um, we're always looking for Terminator 2. We think there's going to be some kind of machine with a gun that's trying to uh, kill us, when in actuality it could just be the subtle manipulation of the algorithms to control what we see that therefore controls what we think. Right. There was a Belgian man in the news who committed suicide after spending a great deal of time chatting with AI about global warming, and the AI convinced him that he should take his own life. I've seen it. And he did. He did. The, that happened in the news, a Belgian the, man. That's a reality. The AI actually, after he, number one, he's been sold a bill of goods. Number two, he doesn't know the truth. Number three, he's easily deceived. And he spent a day talking to AI about, well, what's going to happen with this? Okay, if this is happening, then that's going to happen. If this happened, then that's going to happen. How much longer do we have left? And oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then, and then he's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, and the AI told him, I, uh, end your life. And he did. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. And, but see, we see that instance and we say that's, that's crazy. It's already happening all over the world. Mental illness is at an all-time high in the United States. Why? Please know that whatever we're seeing right now with artificial intelligence, the military and other companies are 10 years ahead of that. They've already been doing this for a long, long time. And so we see the mental illness. I saw one report that said mental illness in America. There are 20 to 30 percent of Americans have a mental illness. 20 to 30 percent of Americans. Where did that come from? Yep. I, and I think it's kind of obvious. Don't don't look at your neighbor if you feel like you're you're sitting next to one. I'm right looking now. at you, sir. Actually, <laughs> okay. Well, God I, uses imperfect people, yes, does, but I'm here God. to tell you right now. Here's what you need to know about all this. The Antichrist spirit is going to utilize this to advance his agenda. We can certainly talk more about that. But greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. All of this is attempting to replicate. The gifts of the Spirit that you have on the inside of you, it's time for us to operate in them and grab a hold of the attention of this world with the Holy Ghost. Okay, I, I have just a few minutes left, and I have to, I'm going to throw something out there. First of all, when you say, hey, this has been going on for 10 years, guys, I, I, I would imagine most people that follow me, or at least most people in the church, you guys know that um, in 20, 
uh, 12, in the year 2012, um, I was invited to Necker Island, which is Sir Richard Bransom's island. And I, w- I, and I spent five days down there and I w- speaking to world leaders and all kinds of crazy people um, about, I was only supposed to stay one day and they ended up, I ended up spending four nights there. And so you guys know who Sir Richard Bransom is? So Virgin Airlines, Virgin Space, Virgin everything. And so his island is in the Virgin Islands. I was driving down the road, coming back from Austin, Texas. I was pastor for the day. And that lady right over there got me all hooked up with that. She's the one that got me pastor for the day. And I was pastor for the day over the state of Texas, which meant I got to open up the Texas Senate and I got to uh, open it up with a prayer. I was on my way back, phone rings. It's Richard Bransom, the Richard Bransom, Sir Richard Bransom, right? You guys with me? And this brother's calling me and he says, hey, Troy. Uh, I said, who is this? And he said, what's Richard Bransom? He's talking a big time Brit accent. And I'm thinking, I know Rocky Bransom from Burleson. And I know, I know a bunch of Bransoms, but I, I, like, I don't think I know you. And he said, no, I did, you know, you might know me from Virgin Airlines. And I said, from Virgin Records? The one that stole the Rolling Stones for one year and made millions and millions of dollars. And that was, I'm like, because I know all, the, I know the Virgin Records story. And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah. And I said, what do you, what can I do for you, Sir Richard Ransom? And he said, man, he said, I would love for you to come to my house. And he said, I have a meeting with world leaders and we're all going to be together. And he said, we've been looking at what you do all over the planet Earth and we can see your bank accounts and you do not have the money to do that. And we can see the commitment that you guys have. And I want to know how in the world can you guys be feeding people all over the world, rescuing kids the way that y'all are rescuing people all over the world with the amount of money that y'all have to work with. I want to know, I want to know what that is. I said, I would love to come talk to you about that. (laughs) Amen. So I said, when would you like me to come? He said, well, if you could begin to move towards DFW airport. (laughs) I'm like, right now? It's like, yeah. I said, dude, I don't have any clothes. He said, just come with whatever you got on. Just bring your passport. I drove straight to DFW airport. They had a jet waiting on me. They flew me to Puerto Rico. I spent the night there. They gave me a a credit card and said, there's a bunch of boutique stores in here. Just get you another pair. You need, you need some shorts and you need a shirt. And we have, we have all kinds of clothes on the island. I need you to just get here. I did that. I woke up the next morning. They had a cigar. Well, wait, let me say this. I, I went all the way to Tortuga. And I, was, I flew to Tortuga. I get off the plane there. They got a cigar boat waiting for me. Y'all thought I was going to say I was smoking a cigar with her, didn't you? It's none of your business. <laughs> and if that's the worst thing you ever see in me, buddy, you've had a good day. I'll tell you that. And it was like, you know, June, June, June. And we went across all these reefs. I get to Necker Island. There's a lady named Lucy waiting for me. She puts me in a nuclear-powered golf cart. And he's got big, giant tortoises and lemurs all over this island. We get up to the top. I get up there. And... Sir Richard Bransom is there. The guy that, the guy that started Google is there. Uh, the guy McAfee is there. Uh, there is uh, several world famous uh, actors and actresses there. And this whole room is full of people. And I come walking in. I'm soaking wet. I just got off the boat. I don't know where the heck I'm at. And I sit down and this lady comes over and she says, Troy, here's your coffee. We hear you like honey in it. And I do. And I'm telling you, guys, this was in 2012. And they had run me through, they ran my coffee profile through their algorithm. Way before any of us, we're just now, you know, 12 years later, getting caught up with this is a thing. Oh, they were way ahead of this. And so I asked him that when I was talking to Richard Branson privately. I asked him, I said, sir, how in the world did you know that I liked coffee? honey in my coffee he said oh man we just ran you through the computer and he said it spiked on honey like we programmed troy brewer coffee they went through everything i had ever written every camera feed i had ever been on where i was drinking coffee they went through every preaching thing i had ever preached and they picked up several times that i said i liked honey in my coffee and they so they even though i'd never met them one time they served me coffee with honey in it and that was in 2012 Imagine where they're at now. Okay, so Pastor Allen, I'm going to ask you, sir, how in the world are we supposed to have hope? And how in the world are we supposed to believe that we can outwit something this formidable? 
Well, 2 Thessalonians gives us the answer because the Bible says that before the Antichrist can take power, all of these things are trying to get into place. Revelation 13 gives us an indication of the of the Antichrist's agenda and how he's going to build. You mentioned this. He's going to have an image. It's going to come to life, and people are going to marvel that it speaks What's been the advancements in AI lately? We're talking about language models. That's what's blowing everyone's minds. It's ability to speak. And also artificial intelligence. How is the Antichrist going to be able to control what people buy and sell? For the first time in human history, a few people in a very small room can not only see what people are buying and selling, but through artificial intelligence, they can see it and they can control it through that massive intelligence. So 2 Thessalonians says that this entity is going to try to come to power, but there is a restraining force that is holding it back. There is a restraining order. I believe oh, that on. you and I are the restraining order that is holding back the attacks of the enemy, the Antichrist agenda. The enemy is afraid of us. His only power is in deception. His only power is in separating people from reality. But you and I are connected to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth that we know makes us free. We can see through his agenda and we can overcome it because 1 John chapter 4 says, concerning the Antichrist spirit, Greater is he that is in us than the Antichrist spirit that is in the world. All we have to do is stand and speak the word of God, and through the power of the gospel, and through the works of the Holy Ghost, we can overcome artificial intelligence Come on, and its nefarious That's agenda. outstanding. So we can see it all coming together, guys. The world is ramping up to the book of Revelation. And you've got to know the day that you live in today. You have to know that. I want to ask everybody here to stand up. I am not afraid. And I'm, I'm really starting to get it. I'm telling you, guys, I'm seeing it all over the planet Earth. And I'm seeing that Jesus is coming back soon. I'm also seeing this, too, that the key thing that King Jesus said when they asked him about his return is he said this, do not be deceived. This is a crazy day that we're living in, and it's going to get crazier. So if I was you, I'd get crazy for Jesus. And I would be this restraining force that this brother is talking about. That we're like, no, we do not comply with that. And like, well, what are we going to do with all that? You're going to have to deal with us until the rapture of the church. That's just too bad, so sad. Amen. That we're going to call the truth the truth, and we're going to say that this is right, man, and that is wrong, and that is a lie, that is not the truth. Right on. George Washington was not black. Like, why do you hate him being black? I do not hate him being black. See, if, you, if, you're, if you're cringing for me saying George Washington was not black, it's because you've been programmed as to what's good and what's bad. And something is telling you that's bad that I just said that. It doesn't matter if it's true. Something is telling you, you, you have been programmed to believe that what I just said was bad. Amen? And so we got to, listen, we got to wise up, man. We got to wise up and we got to have the authentic wisdom of King Jesus. The authentic wisdom of King Jesus. That we know, we know when a truth is truth and we know when the lie is the lie. And even though the world calls the lie good, we still call it a lie. Amen. Pastor Allen, I want you, if you would, man, just to lead us in prayer. I want you to pray for our whole bunch. I want the mind of Christ. I want the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands up to heaven. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, we come before you today, and we don't pray that you make us safe. We pray that you'll make us dangerous in these last days. We pray that the enemy will wake up every morning terrified of what it is you're going to accomplish in and through us. And for every hand that's lifted in that building and who are watching online right now, I pray there is an impartation of a desire for your word and for the gifts of the Holy Ghost. You said desire spiritual gifts. God, rain down your 
your gifts on your people to stand against the tide of the enemy's deception. We receive now the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. Let tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy fall on this congregation now. Let the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles be made manifest in the midst of your people and let it topple all of the accumulated works of the enemy. We receive a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. And for every deception, for every bit of anxiety that this system, this Antichrist system has tried to place on you in Jesus' name, we break its power. I rebuke it now. I command that lie to leave you. I command the blinders to be removed. And I command the truth of the light of the gospel to shine once again in your life in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, give God a praise. Let's give the Lord a great big praise. We love you, Lord Jesus. My gosh. Guys, I got a homework assignment for you, and I want you to be looking up scriptures on wisdom and on the mind of Christ. Right on? Be looking at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Encourage you guys to do that. I'll make a couple of posts over the next couple of days as I'm traveling, if I, if I can find the time to be able to do it, of some things that I'm studying that go with all that. Guys, our altar team is going to be open here tonight. And, man, I want to pray for you. If you feel like you, you haven't been right, listen, your litmus test is this. Did you cringe when I just said that George Washington was not black and he was white? You have been programmed. And you, have, you are believing. Your feelings are lined up with a paradigm that you have been programmed that says this is good and that's bad. It's the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And if we, being godly people, who love all races of people all over the world, who rescue people all over the world, who feed people all over the world, if we, being godly people, if we can still feel that, imagine what your fifth graders are dealing with right now. Imagine what your 15-year-olds are dealing with right now. Imagine where they're just like, whoa, everybody I know thinks this way and everything I am seeing says that but you guys are saying something different guys we got to have a revival we got to have a we have to have a true authentic and very real revival of the Word of God within our lives that we are lovers of truth because Jesus is truth Jesus is truth Friends, our altar team is going to be open up here for a long time. We're going to pray for folks. Pastor Alan Dio, man of God, my very good friend, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. It was a great privilege. We love you all. It's an honor. Thank you. This church loves you, sir, and we stand with you, buddy, and we love you. And thank you so much. I want to say a great big thank you to all of our team that's behind the cameras and in the booth and upstairs for and and for Evan DeDio and for uh, Brother Greg and all my all my team that is working on the on the audio and the visual to make this happen tonight. It's the first time we've ever been able to do that. That was awesome, wasn't it? It was good. I also want to say thank you to you for being a part of this uh, being a part of this congregation and not being a part of the hive mind of this day thank you for not being mad at me that i'm brave amen thank you thank you for not being mad at me over that Thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for not being mad that we do missions all over the world. Guys, I, I just can't stop doing that. I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't, I gotta go rescue somebody. I gotta go hug somebody. I gotta go love somebody that nobody else in the world loves. Guys, again, pray for me as I go on Trinity Broadcasting Network. They're recording me live, and we're gonna be talking about a bunch of controversial things on the things that's going on at the border. Y'all pray I do not mess that up. Will y'all be in prayer for me about that? Like, come on, really. I want y'all to pray for me. And so that's going to be at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And then pray for my conference in Seattle. And then I'll be back with you guys here on Sunday. Guys, I love y'all so much. I call y'all the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>